This tutorial will demonstrate the mail merge process in Microsoft Word for the purpose of creating labels to accompany artwork for exhibits and other presentations. While the primary focus of this tutorial is to create labels that will accompany artwork in an exhibit or gallery featuring student names, grade, title, media, and any other relevant information, you can also use this information to make letters or address labels. We have used this process for our Creative Expressions art exhibit as well as to create the labels in our Sun Journal. All you'll need to accomplish this is a spreadsheet with the data you'd like to display on the label. In this case, I have a sample spreadsheet here that I use all the time for Sun as I'm creating the labels to accompany the artwork. So to get labels that look like this, we're going to get started by opening a new document. Just choose a blank one. If you go up to the Mailings menu, and choose Start Mail Merge, choose the Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard, you'll have a window open on the right-hand side that'll get you started. For our purposes, we're going to use Labels. Select Labels, go down to the bottom and check Next, and we'll be on Step 2. For Step 2, we're going to choose our label type. Ensure the radio button next to Change Document Layout is selected, and then click Label Options. Now for me, the Avery US label is the one that's the default in Microsoft Word for me. There are other choices, however. There's 3M, there's A1, and a whole host of other vendors. You want to make sure that whatever hard copy, whatever card stock or business card or uh, name tag label insert that you have, that you choose the right vendor uh, when you select the product number. The most common one I'm accustomed to using is 5160 for Avery, that's the shipping label. And that's the 1 inch by 2.63 inch uh, label. I've also used 5163. Again, these are adhesive labels for mailings that I've used for shipping. For business cards, I think I've used 5870, and that's a 2 inch by 3.5 inch business card. Uh, again, whatever product you have should have a product number that you can find and use here. If you don't have a number or you can't find the corresponding number, there is a find updates on office.com and there is also an option for creating a new label. However, if you want to avoid pulling your hair out in frustration, I would recommend not trying to create a new label. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use the 5870 clean edge business cards made by Avery. So I'm going to choose OK, and now I'm going to go to step three by clicking Next, Select Recipients. Selecting recipients is where we're going to choose the source for our data. In this case, that spreadsheet that I showed you earlier. Now I'm going to close out my spreadsheet. It's going to be important to do this because once you link the spreadsheet to this, it's going to make that spreadsheet read only. So you can't make any changes after you start this process. If you need to go back and change the spreadsheet, I would recommend stopping the process, making your changes in the spreadsheet, then beginning again. One of the things I'm going to recommend a little bit later is making sure that your spreadsheet has header rows, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So for now, I'm going to choose Browse, and I'm going to locate my document. I put mine on the desktop so I can find it pretty easily. And you see here is my sample spreadsheet. I'm going to open that. And it's going to pretty much default to the first tab. I don't see any reason why you would have any information on a second or a third or a tenth tab or whatever. So you should just be able to click OK here. But please note this checkbox here, first row of data contains column headers. And what that means is at the top of each column, I have something like first name, set, you know, last name, media, uh, grade level, that sort of thing. Uh, I would recommend that your spreadsheet before you start this process have those header descriptors so you know what information you're plugging into this process. I'm going to click OK. Again here, I would just click OK. If you wanted to deselect some of the students, maybe like you said, hey, Abby Roberry, I'm not going to use that person, or Maya, I don't want their information to show up. You could deselect them. I don't know why you would do that, though. I would think that you would have deleted it from the spreadsheet altogether. But if you did want to select specific kids here, you could. Uh, I would just click OK. So now we're ready to insert the data from the spreadsheet. So ensuring that my cursor is in the upper leftmost label, I'm going to choose More Items. And you'll see here, I can see all of the column headers that I've labeled in my spreadsheet. I can do one of two things. I can either double click first name, or I can click once on something and then click Insert. Either one of those two will get the information in there. Uh, what I like to do is just type them all in. Um, the first time, even though there's going to be no spacing here. So I've got those fields in now, and these are going to translate or turn into all of the data in the columns a little bit later. But first, let's see what it looks like. Um, and this is going to be a process you're going to repeat several times now. So you're going to do update all labels over here, which is basically going to take the formatting from this upper leftmost label and apply it to all the labels. So again, how you do that is clicking update all labels. And I'm going to go down here to step five, and I'm going to preview the labels. Keep in mind here these steps of going up and down in the steps. Um, you can go both forward and backwards, and the same is true when we go to step five. So I'm going to click next and go to step five, 
And you'll see now all the student information starts showing up. I got Sophie O'Connor 6 on title, color, pencil, and ink. Laura McCoy, I've got all the information from my spreadsheet showing up here now. But it looks all wonky. It's all jammed up. It's all together. There's no formatting. There's no spacing. So we have to go back and fix that. So I'm going to click Previous. And now we're going to add a space between first and last name. And I'm going to put a hard return after last name for grade, another hard return for title, and another hard return for media. As a matter of fact, I think I want to put media ahead of title. I want to put title last. So I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to put title at the end. So now again, remember we have to update all labels so what we did in this first label shows up in all the rest. Because if I don't update them, only the first one will be updated and everything else will be like it was before. So I'm going to go back, click Update All Labels. Now when I preview those labels, everything I changed in the first label is applied to all the following labels. So now let's, let's talk about like centering or bolding or changing fonts. So I'm going to go back and click Previous. And now let's say, you know, I want this centered because it's going to be a label after all. So I'm going back to the Home menu. I'm going to choose Center. Um, say I want the first and last name. Let's bold those. Again, any formatting you do here, you can apply to all the labels. You can play around with this. You can even add like colored text if you want. I'm going to make grade and media 14. This is what we do for Sun. And I'm going to italicize the title. Also, I'm, I'm, I'll choose a different font just for fun. So now I'm going to update all labels so all those changes that I made apply to all of them. I'm going to click Next. And here, now we've got labels looking a little bit more professional. I don't like that 6 is by itself or that 8 is by itself. 8 what? What does that mean? So I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually type the word in grade before the grade level. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to type G-R-A-D-E. Literally, the text grade is now going to be added to each label. So if I click Update All Labels, you'll see the word grade is precedes the grade field. So when I preview those, now I see grade 6, grade 8, grade 7, grade 12 instead of just the number 12. And then going back one more, I'm just going to change the spacing so it tightens up a little bit. Um, 1.0, I'm going to remove the space before and after the paragraph. Again, just to tighten that up, I'm going to update all the labels so those changes are reflected. And then I'm going to click Next. And now that's looking better. Again, going back and forth between step four and step five is where you're going to probably spend the bulk of your time as you tweak these things and make sure that they look well. Another thing you can do if you notice, there's only one page here. So I only have like 10 per sheet. So maybe I want to kind of cycle through and see what they'll look like for number 30. And so you can click down here, Recipient, just to kind of cycle through and see if there's some weird things that you might want to address. So at this point, we've done the bulk of our editing. We kind of have it finalized how we want it to look. So now we're going to choose uh, Next Complete the Merge. And at this point, I'm going to choose Edit Individual Labels. And what this will do is actually create a new separate document with all of the information from my spreadsheet in it in that format. I'm going to click All because I want all records from 1 to infinity. And you'll notice that now I have a new document here, Labels 2, and this has all the information. It goes on forever because I have like a bunch of entries. So this is now all the information that I'm going to have. So once you've reached this stage, you'll see there are some things that I still need to change. Like Cheyenne, she's all caps. Reiko's all lowercase. Um, Sophie's, you know, colored pencil and ink is kind of, the colored is, is capitalized, but pencil and ink is lowercase. Uh, you've got untitled down here with some uh, quotation marks, which is not consistent with the one up here. You've got uh, Azalea says no title. So the, here are some things that I've learned from doing Sun, um, some irregularities that happen or some ways to kind of unify the way these look. With over 400 entries for the Sun and 45 schools and more than 60 different contributors, it's hard to maintain that uniformity. Even with clear directions, it's likely there will be some irregularities in your data. Some, pe some folks like to you know, put everything in all caps, or they might use quotation marks for the title, or they might put everything in lowercase. And I have a few suggestions for how to handle this. Depending on the severity of those irregularities, you might or might not consider using these methods. It might be easier to just manually change one or two irregularities. Uh, but again, for something like, like the Sun, where we have 400, that's a lot. I don't have time to do that manually. Um, if you have a small class of like 30, uh, maybe maybe you have the time for that. But here's how you might do this. 
And so from here, I can either choose to individually, let me go and, and maybe type over Cheyenne Helton's, like retype it, or for Reiko's, retype hers, um, or go back and delete each, you know, quotation mark. But that might take a while. So here are some ways to kind of make this a little bit quicker. So let's go through, let's find all the quotation marks first. So I'm going to use Control F, and the Control F feature is the find feature, pretty much any computer application. And so I'm going to find, I'm going to look for quotation marks. And so you see here, I can cycle through and see all of the places where there are quotation marks. I don't want those. So if I go to this little caret here, I can use the replace feature. And so now I can find every instance of a quotation mark and I can replace it with nothing. So I'm gonna leave this replace with blank and I'm gonna do replace all. And so I've replaced all eight of those occurrences of quotation marks with nothing. So now quotation marks are not existent in my sheet here that I'm gonna print, okay? Another thing, so see here where it says untitled? See how this untitled is not capitalized? Same thing with Reiko Smith's up here. She's not capitalized and Cheyenne's capitalized. Um, we can highlight all, so I'm gonna press Control A to highlight all. And if I go up here to the change case, I can actually make everything, and also here, colored pencil and ink. See how colored pencil, um, the C in colored is, is capitalized, but pencil and ink is not. I can capitalize each word. And so you'll see that fixed colored pencil and ink, um, untitled, the lowercase untitled is now capitalized. So everything's formal looking. But there is something you got to watch out for if you do this. That's like my name, like McCoy or O'Connor or O'Rourke or McCormick. Uh, those names that have capital letters in the middle of them, you might need to watch out for those and go back and change those. Again, you got to decide what amount of effort you want to put into this and what amount of effort's worth it. Again, if you only have one or two changes, maybe just manually make them. But if you need to make global changes, um, you might think about doing this in here, this way, with those uh, mass changes of, of changing the case or using the find and replace feature. So one more look through here, just to see if there's any weirdness, if there's anything that's wrapped. I know something like Humphrey Central Elementary School, whenever I'm printing an address label for them, that's such a long name that that normally wraps, and so I have to go in and like actually you know, shrink the font. I think I saw a crazy mixed media one down here I wanted to look at. Yeah, so this piece of media here. I might just type this as mixed media, or if it's really important that each piece of the media is included, I might just kind of shrink that down to make sure it fits. Um, these are some of the things you can do to, to make your labels ready. And again, this is the label that's ready to be printed. It's not necessarily in the mail merge section now because you've already populated this out. So once you've made all those changes, they're ready to print. Load up your cardstock or your business card, perforated edges from Avery or whatever brand you have. Load that into the printer, uh, click print, and hopefully it comes out ready for a wonderful art exhibit. So as you can see, once you get to step six, um, you gotta make some decisions on, on how you wanna make those final changes and polishing up. Again, if you wanna do it globally, uh, or if you wanna do it more surgically, uh, those choices will depend on the volume of students you have and the volume of artwork you wanna display. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, as always, please reach out to me if you have any questions on how to do this or if you have any um, concerns, and I'd be happy to help.